of the Kosepsum and the Lekwungen ancestors and families. So we're really, really grateful to be able to do the work that we do today um, here on these lands. And I know many of us are working from home right now and are located in all sorts of different places around the world. So really just wanna take this moment wherever we are to just acknowledge the lands that we are on. And with that, we will begin our session on the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management. So my name is Christy Jones and I'm an education advisor at the university, but from here on out, I will be taking a back seat and will be watching the wonderful Dr. Eugene Tomlinson take us away um, all through this presentation. So Eugene is the school director for the School of Tourism and Hospitality and also an associate professor. So thank you so much, Eugene, for being here today. Thank you, Christy, and thank you everyone for, for attending. Um, for some of you, this might be a little early in the morning or, or afternoon or late at night, so, uh, so welcome. Just to quickly go through, I guess, some of the different things we're gonna be talking about today. Um, just a, a brief overview of why you'd want to study tourism and hospitality at Royal Roads just some of the, the different things that we've got at Royal Roads that you might be interested in. A bit of an overview of the undergraduate programs. We've got two different over undergraduate programs and then our graduate programs, three different options for that. And finally, just some, a bit of an overview of different experiences that kind of span all across all of our different programs. And I guess one of the things to point out as well uh, throughout this, and I don't know that I'll necessarily catch all of the, the chat questions, um, but if you have any questions throughout, go ahead and, and put them into the, the chat. I'll try to address them as we go. Otherwise, um, you can save some of your questions to the end. But I guess to, to just let you know, this is kind of a very open and a free flowing sort of presentation, very much like a lot of the, the stuff that we do. So that way, hopefully um, you get a sense of, of just the, the feel for the university and the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management. So um, why would you wanna to study tourism and hospitality at Royal Roads. Next slide, there. So I guess to start off with, all of the degrees um, across the, the whole university, but specifically talking about tourism, hospitality management, they're very applied. And by that, we mean that we try to get you out of the classroom a lot. What we'll do is we will, um, really bring home the theories, the ideas, the different concepts that we're talking about. We're always taking those ideas and applying them to real world subjects, real world topics. You know, I guess a prime example right now being COVID. And we will take the ideas around COVID, uh, even talk about post COVID, what's the tourism and hospitality field going to look like after COVID. And we bring that into the classroom so that you're talking with dealing with real world problems and real world issues. Um, our classes, not your, I guess not your typical, you know, university where you've got hundred or more people sitting in a classroom. Typically in our School of Tourism and Hospitality Management, we're looking at anywhere from 20 to maybe 35 students in a classroom. What that means for you is there's a lot more direct connection with your classmates, with your professors. Um, one of the things that we get a lot of when people come to our school is, you know, that direct connection with the professors and even with myself as the director. You'll see all of us um, around everywhere. And that means we can get into these better discussions. And it's a much more of a, a I guess a friendly feel to the whole school and everything. Uh, as I mentioned, out of the classroom learning, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. We do a lot of team projects. So in a lot of the, the courses, not all of them, 
but a lot of the, the courses, you will have team projects. So for all of you, it gives you that opportunity to learn from people from various places around the world. All of our classes tend to be more than 50% international and with that international being spread across the entire globe. Tourism and hospitality by its nature is very global, uh, very multicultural. So you get to learn within the classroom, um, all these different perspectives, different points of view. And then you will have all of that experience and understanding when you get out into the work world. We have a fantastic um, career development program. So we help you along with all of your resume, with the interview process. We have different um, employers who come in um, and they will hire straight through the school. So we've got a lot of good connections. And because we've also got a lot of connections with past alumni, again, uh, lots of opportunities in the workforce for you go. And what you'll find out very quickly in tourism and hospitality management is that it's very much a small community in some respects, um, that whole sort of just a few degrees of separation from everybody. So, you know, I might not know the, the owner of this other business or the GM, but probably one of my students does or somebody that I know does. So you have school hospitality who are in motion to assist the new student. I'm not sure. Uh, so, um, and international opportunities, again, we'll talk about that in uh, a little bit later in this presentation. Some of the different ways that you could move into um, this, the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management are years one and two, Royal Roads has an international school. So those of you from around the world that might be interested in coming into Royal Roads right from the start, we do have an international school for years one and two, gives you a bit of a, a basis and a foundation for um, just education in general, and then start to into the idea of tourism and hospitality management. As well, uh, some of you might be somewhere at a college or looking at a college first. Uh, maybe you've got a diploma as well. So you might do that at another school, another institution, and then come to us in years three and four. Years three and four in the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management is when you start to focus either in the BA in International Hotel Management or the BA in Global Tourism Management. So depending upon your interest, whether it's hotels and hospitality or tourism and the general field of tourism, um, that's where you start to focus in. And then after you've got your degree or possibly you've got many years of experience, and we'll talk about different flexible entries uh, possibilities after that. Um, maybe you'll come to us for a Master of Arts in Tourism Management. So we've got a couple of different Master of Arts and Tourism Management programs that we'll talk about in a little bit. And as you'll see across the bottom, those little points of internship, between years one and two, um, students will do an internship and all of these internships that we talk about are paid internships. So these are opportunities for you to get a bit of work experience, to start networking, to start to un better understand how all of those things you're learning are applied in, in the work world. Then after years three and four, there's another internship opportunity. And finally, uh, with the MATM or the Master of Arts in Tourism Management, again, more internship opportunities. So lots of ways that you can learn all about working um, as well as getting your foot in the door into the, the uh, industry of tourism and hospitality management. So our undergraduate programs. 
start off with, uh, we have the BA in Global Tourism Management, and I'm not going to go through all of these different courses. If you take a look online through the Royal Roads University website, you'll see all of these courses and all of them will be described. Um, but I will highlight a few of them. Um, and I guess better explain some of them. For example, the, the very first one you see up top there is selected topics. And that's kind of a, a really interesting course and an opportunity for us and for the students where we will connect up with experts from around the world and we bring them into the university and have a, a very specialized, very um, topical course that where we choose something that's very relevant to what's going on right now. So I'll give you a couple of quick examples. Um, about three years ago, we brought somebody in who was an expert in um, some artificial intelligence and virtual tourism. So we brought him in, he brought all of his equipment in. And what it did was it meant that the student, students were able to try out uh, virtual tourism and see how it works. Think about the impacts of how virtual tourism can affect the tourism and hospitality industry. Uh, the year after that, we brought somebody in who's an expert on cruise ship tourism. And she talked to the students all about how cruise ships are shaping tourism and hospitality, opportunities in the industry, things like that. So every year we change up that selected topic based on what are some very relevant things going on. A um, couple of other highlights. We have a field school in the Global Tourism Management Program where we get all of you out of the classroom. We take you uh, away from the university. The usually, I guess, pre-COVID, uh, what we would do is we would go on Vancouver Island. We'd spend a few days in Tofino and Euclid um, on the west coast of Vancouver Island where students have an opportunity to do a bit of surfing, uh, stand up paddle boarding, whale watching, things like that. A um, couple of days later, we were at Mount Washington where students could go skiing, snowboarding. But what we're trying to do with all of that is at the same time, you're getting a chance to meet with the resort managers or re meet with the tour operators meet with some of the local community members and see how tourism and hospitality impacts on them, their communities, and how they are also shaping tourism and hospitality. So it's really a, a fantastic chance for students to get out, experience a little bit of the tourism and hospitality, do some terrific networking, and to just have fun, to, to really experience what it's like to be a part of the tourism and hospitality industry. And I guess finally on here to highlight, uh, we have a new course that's coming out this fall, uh, a capstone project where students will pick up on different projects or different ideas and have a chance again to really apply all of these concepts, these theories and ideas in, around tourism and hospitality, but on a real project, a real idea, and at the end of this project, you have something that you can say is that you helped contribute to and, and be a part of. One of the things that we're looking at right now is we have a partnership with a university in Mexico. So we've been working with them on some destination development in an area between Guadalajara, Mexico and Puerto Vallarta. So destination development, a bit of product development, and things like that. Just to highlight also very quickly on this is you may not see the word sustainability in any specific course, but know that sustainability kind of weaves its way through all of the courses and all of the programs that you'll find, uh, not only in the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management, but throughout the whole Royal Roads University. Sustainability uh, is that thing that 
every one of us realize that we we need to focus on and we need to care about sustainability. So that's one thing that uh, you'll get a real feel for as well. With the BA in International Hotel Management. So those of you that are, are really keen on the hotel industry and uh, management of hospitality, those sort of concepts, this is the program for you. Um, this is again, a really hands-on sort of program. We get you out into the hotels, you're meeting with hotel leaders and, and managers, and you're really getting to understand the full operation of how the hotels and hospitality industry works. So you're getting to see how the different management systems, the operations work. Um, talking about human resources and the hiring and training and managing of people from around the world. So again, to, to highlight a few of the different things, um, value co-creation. This is based on the idea that we don't actually sell um, seats or we don't sell hotel rooms when we're doing, uh, when we're talking about hospitality, what we're doing is you're selling an experience. So instead of that, you know, a bed for the night, what you're giving is you're giving an escape or a place to relax or things like that. So in value co-creation, really talking about what is the experience that people are looking for and how do we provide that? Um, digital communications, again, understanding how through social media and through the different digital digital media channels, uh, you can connect up with people. Ethical issues in hospitality, really thinking about, you know, what is our impact on um, the environment, on different people, on different social systems, and, and those sort of aspects. And then leading edge hospitality, really diving deep into where is the industry going? So taking a look at um, again, things like virtual reality, artificial intelligence, new technology that's coming in, new and leading edge ideas on different opportunities where hospitality is going, not just where they are, but where is the industry going so that when all of you get out into the industry, it gives you that sort of leg up on where you might want to go um, and we've had several of our students actually come through programs like this and even start some of their own businesses. So you can see the hospitality entrepreneurship where you get to learn about setting up your own business and taking that idea from just a concept all the way through to uh, opening up your own business. Very quickly, um, these are just some of the, the transfer options that we already have through Royal Roads that will take you into the, uh, the two undergraduate programs. So you can see this is just a, a bit of a list of the different colleges and institutions where we have agreements already set up just to make it a little bit easier for those of you that are at already studying at some of these different colleges, these different places to come into the, the program. Having said that, um, if you don't see your institution there, possibly we already do have an agreement or that's not a problem. Um, because we have fantastic uh, people working in the administration and the registration they'll help you through, guide you through the whole process and bring you into uh, the school as well. And again, thinking about, you know, some of these different diploma programs that you might already have, or what we've got is a, a flexible entry option where possibly you don't have the, a diploma already, but you've got lots of work experience and that can also help you move into the different programs.
and our graduate programs. So we've got, um, I guess, three different possibilities when you're looking at the, the graduate programs. We have our on-campus or our, our soon-to-be on-campus. Um, as you might expect, with COVID, uh, we've been off-campus now since roughly March, but we're hoping to be back onto campus uh, fairly soon. So once we have the on-campus, uh, we've got the on-campus program that you'll come into the program. And right now we have three different entry time periods. So we have entry in um, August or September, then we've got another one in January and another one in April. So really trying to spread out and you'll come into the program and learn with a group of other um, domestic and international students and learn about the, the different master's programs. We've got a blended. So those of you that may not want to come onto campus or possibly you're working, um, you can have the opportunity to come on to, to, uh, to study through the university. And by blended, we mean most of your courses will be done online. Although we do have these periods um, where you will come onto campus for possibly a week or 10 days, thereabouts. And it gives you an opportunity to meet up with your classmates, to meet up with the different instructors, and we'll have these residencies um, spread throughout your program. Finally, graduate certificates. So those of you that might be wanting to take a few different skills, a few different possible uh, specializations after you've already got a degree or after you've already got your uh, a graduate program, we've got different uh, graduate certificates that are possible as well. Some people like to use these graduate certificates as a way to just get a feel for what it's like to study uh, and go back to being studying. So what you can do is you come to uh, Royal Roads into the School of Tourism and Hospitality Management, take one of these graduate certificates, which is three different courses. And after you've done those three courses, maybe you'll get a feel that, yeah, I, I am ready to come back to school. And you can use those credits directly into either the on-campus or the blended program. And, you know, I guess personal experience, when I, I was in industry for a while and I decided to go back to school, and this was kind of a, a nice way for me to, to learn about um, whether or not I was ready to, to take that step back into um, academic learning. In the Master of Arts in Tourism Management, uh, we have a few different core courses. So you can see on the left-hand side of this table, some of the different core courses that you will be doing. Things like the Tourism Leadership, uh, transforming destinations where you'll actually go out and we take a look at different destinations and understand that it's no longer that, you know, uh, that tourism board that all they're involved with is marketing the destination. Now with destination management organizations, Really what we're talking about is managing, again, the whole experience, the idea, the interactions with the local communities, with government, with the, the private sector, and how all of them interact and work with each other. So it's been a real change in the perspective and the views on how tourism is, tourism and hospitality is done. Um, research methodology gives you an opportunity to not only learn how to do research, both qualitative and quantitative, but you get a chance to do a real research project um, that you've decided something that you're interested in. You go out and, and just get a, a real feel for how research is done. In addition to these core courses, 
there are several elective courses, and this is just a very small sample of some of the courses that you could choose to take. So things like sustainability, again, um, really focusing in on how to make tourism sustainable over the long time, long period. And by sustainable, we're talking not only about the environment, but we're talking about socially, like your communities and things like that, the economic aspects of it, um, the environmental. So really covering all of the bases when we're talking about sustainability. Um, trends and issues. So really seeing where the hospitality industry is going, what's happening, things like that. And as mentioned previously, the internship. Recently, uh, we implemented a few different possible ways for you to complete your Master of Arts in Tourism Management. So we have a thesis option, which is uh, kind of your typical thesis. It's worth 12 credits towards your, your degree. Um, so what you would do is you would do the thesis and two, you get to choose two different electives. The thesis is very much a, a hands-on, um, very research focused sort of project where you're diving deep into a particular topic that's of interest to you and getting a chance to get your get a real feel for how research is conducted that's got a, a very high level a very academic and practical element to it next option is a major research project so a major research project, I guess the difference between the thesis and the major research project is the thesis tends to be a bit more academic than the major research project. A lot of the people that will do a thesis tend to be thinking, you know, about going on to um, a doctoral program, things like that. The major research project, you can still go on to a doctoral but a lot of the people also doing the major research project are just interested in seeing how tourism, hospitality, and research can make a difference in the world. And it's just a very quick comment or plug, I guess, for those of you that might be interested. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we'll be, we've got the open house again, and we'll be diving a little bit deeper into the idea of how tourism and hospitality can make a difference in the world. So the major, major research project, again, gives you an opportunity to get your hands dirty with doing a bit of research um, on any topic that's of interest to you that's connected to tourism and hospitality and gets you out into the, the work world and some of the networking, as well as developing an idea around a, a specific project, that sort of uh, concept. Finally, the capstone course just um, is more of a course-based way of completing the program. So you have five electives and the capstone course. And the capstone course is designed to just kind of wrap things up um, for those of you that aren't doing one of the other options and bring everything together. So it gives you a little, I guess, understanding of all of the things that you've been doing and how they all come together to, uh, to finish off with the Master of Arts in Tourism Management. Um, to answer your question, Angela, about the, to complete, if you're talking about the master's program and completing it, um, there isn't a, a one year option, but you can get it done moderately quickly. Uh, I think it's eight, about 18 months to complete the Master of Arts. Um, but we can take a look at that if you send a note to me. Recently as well, we introduced some new specializations into the Master of Arts and Tourism Management program. Uh, we have a sustainability. So those 
electives that we were talking about just a moment ago, what you would do is you would focus all of your electives towards uh, one of these different specializations. So whether it be sustainability, again, really diving deep into the idea of uh, sustainability, social entrepreneurship. And those of you that might be new to the idea of social entrepreneurship, that takes the idea of using business concepts and business ideas, but to help uh, social issues and social problems. For example, you might look at how tourism and hospitality can help things like homelessness or underemployment or uh, things like that. And then disaster and emergency management. Um, prime example, COVID, uh, but other examples of disaster and emergency management that you might focus on with tourism hospitality is um, flooding, uh, forest fires, things like that. We've had a few different forest fires throughout um, British Columbia and you know, see other examples in Australia and other locations and really how the tourism hospitality industry can prepare for and um, adapt and understand tourism and emergency management. Um, chance to associate with any tourism companies? Definitely. Um, through all of our courses, uh, we do have a lot of connections. What we will do is uh, we will bring different industries and different people into the classroom or you'll do virtual connections with them. Um, and as you'll see a little bit later as well, many of our instructors are already working for tourism and hospitality companies in Canada. Um, out of the classroom experiences, and just to, uh, I guess, being aware of the time, wanted to make sure we have a chance, but I mentioned about going surfing. Uh, those of you that might not be familiar with Vancouver Island, uh, we have some terrific surfing on the West Coast. So uh, we will go out at times and give you an understanding of how surfing and how these sort of outdoor experiences connect in with industry, tourism, hospitality management. Um, these were just some of our students on the field study for the tourism program. Other things that you'll do um, as a part of the different programs, both the undergraduate and graduate, is we take you to conferences at times. Um, you can see over to Vancouver, we'll go into that. Um, we were involved in case competitions with the students. There's a dine around program in Victoria where the hospitality students, as a part of one of their courses, uh, actually goes and dines at various in places, restaurants within Victoria and gives you a, uh, an idea of the different experiences that are possible uh, in Victoria, as well as tying it into many of the courses that you're doing. Again, uh, different conses, conferences. Every year, uh, the last couple of years it's been virtual, but every year we get the students going to the BC Tourism Industry Conference. So not only learning from them, but fantastic opportunity for you to network with industry and to get to meet them, uh, to get to understand what's there. Uh, there's a Young Hotelier Summit that's an opportunity for hospitality students to uh, go to Lausanne, uh, Switzerland and participate in a global conference with other hospitality students. Of course, um, we're always tying these experiences with a, a bit of fun as well, of course. So in Victoria, uh, we've got a Comic-Con festival where the students actually have participated in helping to set up, manage and run uh, Comic-Con. Uh, we'll get the students out to do whale watching. Uh, again, those of you that might not know about Victoria all that well, 
uh, we have an incredible whale watching industry here in Victoria. So getting to meet with some of the managers and of course, going out and experiencing some of these different uh, whale watching and tourism restaurants and things like that, conferences. And of course, um, no visit to or no time in Victoria and Vancouver Island is you, you have to get into the outdoors. We have such an incredible wealth of uh, resources in our outdoors. So we will get students out uh, for walks and talking about tourism, hospitality and impacts. Uh, there are also opportunities to go camping where we let the students and, you know, sitting around a campfire is a terrific way to, to just get to know each other, to do the networking um, and to just get a much better understanding and feel for the people you're in these courses with. All of these programs also have opportunities to, to go out and experience um, the world, whether it be through your internships or through exchanges. So we have exchange agreements, um, various ones around the world. Uh, you can see on this page, several in Europe, so Austria, uh, a few different places, Austria, Germany, Norway. As well, um, various other places around the world. So uh, we have an exchange agreement for students in Vietnam, in Australia, uh, down in Chile or in South Korea. And what you would do with these exchange programs, um, you pay your tuition at uh, Royal Roads as per normal, but you get to spend a term at one of these different international partners. So what you would do is you just pay for your you know, accom accommodations and your flight and things like that. And you get to experience one of these international partners. All of these opportunities you'd be learning in English, uh, but for some of these different countries, if you want to learn another language while you're there, quite often that opportunity is there as well. So for example, while you're in Chile, maybe you wanna learn a bit of Spanish or in South Korea, learn a bit of Korean. So um, really, again, experiencing the world. For your internships, and I mentioned a bit earlier, uh, several opportunities to do internships throughout the various programs. For the internship between years two and three, so those of you that might be coming to us right from year one, uh, the international students, we try to make sure that your internship is within Canada, just so that you get a bit of Canadian experience, things like that. But for your internship between after year four or your internship for your Master of Arts in Tourism Management program, you can choose wherever you want to go. So you can see this is just a bit of a, a sense or an idea of some of the different places where people have decided to do their internships. And it's, you know, I guess the world is open for wherever you want to go. Um, we do have to approve of these internships and all of these internships, as I mentioned earlier, are paid internships. Uh, we believe that your time and your experience is valuable to the employer. So they should be paying you for that, uh, that experience and that work that you'd be doing for them. But, you know, we do open it up for the world to do your, those different internships. This gives you a little bit of a sense or a bit of an idea of some of the different people that we have 
as our faculty. We've got a few core people um, and I've got three of the core people in on the slide. If you, there's three of the four people on the right hand side of the screen. Um, those are some of our core faculty. All of the people on the, the left hand, the six people on the left hand side of the screen, all of those are what we call associate faculty. So there was a question earlier about, you know, whether or not you get to meet and experience and get to know a bit of the industry. Well, all of these people who are associate faculty are working professionals. So they might own their own business. Um, they might be working for a company, but what they do is they teach for us um, because they love teaching and as an opportunity to give back to the students and give back to the community. So they're bringing in that practical, that current work experience and those current work opportunities. They bring those into the classroom and they do a fantastic job of weaving all of these theories and these ideas and these concepts together um, to give you just a very rich experience in the classroom and outside of the classroom, again, with all of their connections within industry and uh, the local community. It also provides an opportunity for us to, um, to better connect you and bring you out to experience what the, the community has to offer in Victoria. So you can see quite a range of, of different types of professors and instructors that you'll have. And again, coming back to the earlier idea of because your classroom is so small, uh, because we're looking at maybe 25 to 35 students in that classroom, you have this tr tremendous ability to get to know all of these instructors. And all of these people will care about um, your success in the program and in their course. So uh, this is just, I guess, a, a glimpse at some of the faces of people teaching in the program. And uh, so back to enrollment services, and I'm not sure if, if Christy wants to, to pick up on this. Uh, again, as a very quick comment or quick maybe plug is that tomorrow we're going to be talking more about um, what you can expect with a, a degree in tourism and hospitality management. Where are the opportunities? What does the industry look like right now? Um, where can you go? There's you know a bit of question with COVID. What's tourism hospitality industry going to look like? Um, come back tomorrow and you'll get a sense of, you know, the industry, it's a very quick comment and maybe a little bit of a teaser. Uh, the industry looks actually phenomenal in many different respects. Um, but I guess we'll talk tomorrow more about where some of those ideas or where some of those possibilities are in the industry. Perfect. Thank you so much, Eugene. Yeah, I know there was um, a few questions in the chat box surrounding what the industry is going to look like and things like that. So this will be the perfect session for you all to check out tomorrow. And I think we posted in the chat box as well, um, the title of it as well as the um, time and such for you to join tomorrow. So it'll be the same link that you use today to be able to access the session and everything like that. And yes, um, if you do have any questions after this session, please do reach out to our enrollment services team. Um, Rhonda is one fantastic example of our team. She's been helping us out in the chat box today. Um, and she added her contact information in the chat box as well. But you can reach out to our team as a whole um, by the contact information here on the slide. So the top contact information is for if you'd be applying as a Canadian student. And the bottom contact information is if you'd be applying as an international student. And with that, we're nearing the end of our time, but I do believe we have a few extra minutes before the next session. So I'm just gonna double check that 
we have answered all the questions and take a look at the chat box to see if we may have missed any. So let me see. I think many of them that we did answer along the way or Rhonda did answer. And there was a few questions surrounding um, individuals um, eligibility for programs and their own work experience and um, qualifications and things like that. So for those sorts of inquiries, it is best if you do reach out to our team afterwards and they can really delve in more in depth, looking at your own personal history and background to be able to give you an answer on that. And let me see, there was a question here and Eugene, let me know if we already touched on this, but someone was asking what the difference between uh, the MRP course and the coursework within the um, MATM program as a whole. And um, if there was any sort of uh, samples that can be like writing samples that can be provided ahead on that or just insights on on that process. Yeah, the well, I guess, first off, the nice thing is that you don't need to choose which completion option before you enter the program. So you can come into the program and get a sense for which completion option works best for you. And we can help guide you through at that point. But as far as the coursework, the courses that you would be taking are exactly the same, whether you're doing um, the thesis route or the MRP route, the uh, major research project or the, um, the capstone. The only difference is uh, the number of electives that you have available after those core. So um, if you're doing, for example, the major research project route, um, you would do that major research project. And I believe you only have three other um, electives that you can choose, as opposed to, I think you only have two electives you can choose if you choose the thesis route or up to five electives that you would choose with the capstone. But as far as the courses themselves that you would be taking, um, they are exactly the same. So you're sitting in the, the classroom with the exact same people and things like that. Um, with the MRP, you've just chosen that you want to, to really dive a little bit deeper into a specific research project. So I'll give you a, a couple of very quick examples of that sort of thing. Um, one student we had was very interested in mountain bike tourism. So what he did was he met up with uh, or and connected up with a bunch of mountain bikers and got a sense from them um, what are the, the characteristics or what do they look for in a mountain bike destination? And also connected up with the community and ended up with this really neat model of what you need to do if you're developing mountain bike tourism. Uh, we've had other students take a look at sustainability in hotels and what sort of processes are required in order to make your hotel more sustainable. So. They may do uh, a series of interviews or focus groups or surveys um, with the industry or with the public. And then they, they write up a paper with potentially some suggestions, some recommendations and present that out to the university. And some of our students will also with either the MRP or the thesis route uh, will publish their research. So we've had students go and publish uh, in different very different journal articles. We've also had students go out uh, after they've completed that thesis or the MRP onto a doctorate and further on into academic uh, pursuits. Perfect. Yeah, some really, really exciting projects and a lot you can do within that. Um, there's a few questions surrounding um, somebody asked if they are a mature student and they have 10 years experience in the industry if this would be um, if the MATM would be a good program for them and I know Rhonda did answer um, with a little bit of info about our flexible admissions uh, process but just yeah definitely reach out to our team if that's the circumstance because we do have a flexible admissions route that considers all of that wonderful work, work experience that you have. 
Exactly. And that's where it's interesting because we will have some of the students that come into the programs, both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. Uh, some of them have gone strictly and, and done the education path, but other students come in with that work experience. And it's, it's a fantastic uh, dynamic within the classroom where you've got people with these different perspectives and different views and um, and everybody, it, it really melds together into a traffic, terrific uh, classroom opportunity. And with the group projects, uh, you're sitting around working on these different projects and different ideas with people with um, all sorts of different experiences and ideas and, you know, from different countries and different cultures. And it's just, it's a lot of fun um, to, to be different in these different courses. Exactly. Um, another question here around what is a block transfer and what does that look like? So Rhonda posted a helpful hint, but I think it might be nice to read it out uh, for the, everyone watching the recording later that a block transfer means doing a two year diploma and having it represent the first two years of a four year bachelor's. So you would start our bachelor's at the third year. But again, with that, um, with the transfer agreements, just to reiterate what um, Eugene said ahead of time, if you don't see your institution on that list, um, don't fret because we still have other ways of being able to take a look at your qualifications and see where they can transfer in um, to the program, even if you went somewhere else. With that in mind, um, thank you all so much for attending this session. In the next five minutes, so starting at 8 a.m. Pacific time, we're gonna be diving into a session on the School of Education and Technology. So please feel free to stick around and learn a bit more about those programs as well. And um, Eugene, any final words from you before we head off for the day? Well, I guess the only thing again, uh, come back tomorrow, eight o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time, and we'll be able to talk more about where are those opportunities in the industry? Why, why am I so excited about where things are going to go um, and, and what you can possibly look at doing in, in the industry. So it's, it's a terrific uh, possibilities out there. Yes, exactly. Please join us again tomorrow. Already sure. everyone, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.